Are you ready to begin, Janine? Sure, yes, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, I took a, a, a look at everybody who's online and we do indeed have a quorum for our CAC meeting. So the first order of it on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I have one change to make. That change is that we will not need number five. That has been overcome by events and apparently it'll be covered under the report from PCAP. So with that change, I'll ask for an approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Is there a second? Did I hear a second? Second. second. All right, thank you. It has been a move to the second to approve the agenda uh, with the elimination of item number five. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. You received it by email a few days ago, the minutes from our meeting in, in uh, June. And so I, if there are no uh, immediate corrections to be made, I'll ask for approval, please. Or ask for uh, a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. This is Terry, I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The post, same sign. Thank you, and as always, if you have any changes that you wanna make, please contact Janine directly and she'll work with you on that. Um, second item of business is uh, Mr. Abay would like to address us. Uh, I believe he's on, the, I believe he's on somewhere. I am. I am on, Irene. All right. Thank you. It's hard to see when you can only see 25 little squares in one day at one time. <laughs> yeah, I actually dialed in. So uh, apologies. You probably can't see me because uh, I am not on Zoom, but uh, hopefully everybody can hear me. Yes, we can. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And it's a pleasure to be with you all. And I believe this is the first time I'm with you all since the... Uh, mission of destroying all the stockpile um, munitions, chemical weapons at Pueblo have, has been completed. And I want to congratulate you all, including the PCAP team and the PCD team, for making sure that we successfully destroyed those munitions um, with safety in mind, uh, without any incidences, uh, environmental or from a safety perspective. Uh, in fact, we completed that, as most of you know, on the 22nd of June. And on the 7th of July, we completed the last destruction of the munitions in the Bluegrass, our sister site. Um, and with that, the United States uh, was able to meet its treaty commitments a few months earlier than the end of September of 23. And the department has met its congressional mandate uh, before the December 23 deadline. So this is obviously very good news. Um, I am super excited for everyone. And I also want to thank the community and the CAC members for your support over the many years and the trust that you gave us to uh, as we worked through the last five and a half or so years to safely destroy all the munitions that were stockpiled in your backyard for decades. Um, you know, this, this is a momentous occasion and I certainly, uh, it's not lost on me. So I want to thank you all for those that support that you gave us. But, but I, we recognize uh, that our mission is not done. Uh, we do need to complete the uh, closure portion, which is a two-phase portion uh, of the facility. Uh, the first phase is the decontamination and the decommissioning of the facility, and, and that is on contract. Um, and it's important for me to mention that this portion of the work will be performed by the same workforce that we had in place and who completed the destruction operations uh, this, this is important that the workforce understand chemical agents, the hazards associated with that, and understand the equipment that are there. So, um, and they successfully completed the operations mission uh, with safety in mind. So that 
bodes well for us because that obviously does reduce the safety risk associated with closure. With that said, we are undertaking lots of safety precautions up front, to, uh, making sure that our workforce continually trains and is ready to take on that next challenge. Um, we're ready to initiate the work for closure. Obviously, uh, we need to get our permit from CDPHG, and I believe the public comment period for that permit will end in the August, the late August timeframe. Uh, and we'll continue to work with uh, closely with CDPHE to address any comments that we get from the public or, or from CDPHE for that matter. Um, the demolition phase of the closure is currently not on contract yet. Uh, we did that on purpose, as you all know, as I've mentioned many times before. Um, the reason for it is we want to continue to work with the CAC members and particularly Publiflex and Russell and his team to ensure that we have a common agreement on the facilities that we want to um, keep behind uh, for public parks and the community for future reuse, uh, and then what portions we, we have to tear down. So once uh, we, we iron that out, uh, we hope to put that contract in place in the, in the next year, calendar year, uh, 25. Um, and again, I just want to uh, reiterate that I want to congratulate you all for your support and I thank you all for, and the, com the community and the CAC members for, you know, working with us so closely. I want to thank CDPHE uh, for being part of that team and obviously the actual workforce and PCD for doing all the heavy lifting as uh, they went through destroying over 780,000 rounds at, at Pueblo. So again, uh, big congratulations to all. Uh, I stand by to uh, answer any questions that you have and I thank you. Back to you, Irene. Thank you. Are there any questions of, of Mike right now that you want to have him address? I know he'll be out here for our celebration in late August. So, but if you have something now, please don't wait until late August to ask them that. <laughs> I don't see any questions, Mike. So thank you very much for being with us. Uh, our next awesome. Thank you. And I look forward to the celebration. Our next item on the agenda is to introduce uh, Colonel Rodney McCutcheon. Colonel McCutcheon uh, took uh, command of the depot just at the end of, of June, and this is his first CAC meeting. So welcome, sir, and the floor is yours. Well, thank you for that introduction. Yes, I did uh, just take command at the end of June, but um, I'm not unfamiliar with this area because I was the Bluegrass Chemical Activity Commander a few years ago, and during that time, in that tenure, I did get a chance to come out to PCD two or three times to, um, to visit and see how operations were out here. So coming up to PCD for me was just like a continued maturity in my life. It's like a, the perfect fit for me and I'm glad to be here. Um, I did wanna share a few things with you all while we're here. I'm gonna talk about a few events um, that's going, that we're gonna plan on going to, but I'm kind of right now, just um, taking a lot in, you know, figuring out exactly how I help um, complete transition and the vestiture of the installation, how we continue to support Mr. Bay and Aqua as they um, do their decontamination and decommissioning. And then also how do I support Pueblo Plex as they become the new owners of this, um, of this location. So I'm still figuring it out. I'm on a, a worldwide, um, People show meeting the right folks, meeting the right stakeholders, continuing to build on those strong relationships that we have with the community. That's one of my number one focuses. So um, with that said, I'm gonna go into a few events that we plan on attending. A few weeks ago, I did get a chance to meet with the mayor, uh, Mayor Nicholas Granisser. So uh, we got a chance to sit down. We talked about how we can possibly transition our workforce into the Pueblo community, which would be great. A lot of the folks that have been working here for a while some of our genera generational folks, they still want to stay in the area. So we want to figure out how we can get them jobs in the area to still stay here in the community. Um, next, I did get a chance to visit the Military Affairs Committee on 14 July. It's amazing the, the Veterans Affairs and all the programs that we have here in the area. I was astonished. I've been in a lot of locations, but nowhere have I been where the Veterans Affairs organizations all come together, synchronize efforts and, and synergy and make veterans have a better quality of life. So for our upcoming events, on um, July 31st, I'll get a chance to meet with um, Pueblo District Attorney Jeff Chosner. 
I did meet him at the Veteran Affairs um, meeting a few weeks ago, but this time I get a chance to kind of sit down and really um, talk one-on-one, -on -one, see how we can leverage each other's position to make the, um, the depot more successful as we close. And also how do we help out with the folks that leave out of the depot and possibly living here in Pueblo for a little bit longer. On one August next week, I'll have the all the CAC folks, you get a chance to come out and hang out with, with me and Sheila for a little while, and we get a chance to meet in person and not just virtually. So I look forward to that meeting next Tuesday. Um, on Monday, December, August, we'll have our routine meeting with the BRAC folks. So that's Jay Foster, who's in DC, and then our teammates here on ground. And that allows us to really smooth out exactly how we support each other with getting this uh, installation bracketed out properly. Um, next, we're gonna attend another military affairs committee on Friday 11th. Um, on Tuesday, the 15th of August, I'll attend my first Colorado CSEP IPT meeting. So they did say one last one for me before we transition out of having CSEP IPTs or even the CSEP program. So I get a chance to go there and meet those folks and then immediately following on that Wednesday, we'll have the recognition ceremony for CSEP. So I'll make sure I'll, I'll be a part of that as well. A few more events I want to cover before um, passing it off to Pueblo Plex. As on um, the Saturday, the 26th of August, we will be attending the Colorado State Fair Parade. I'm looking forward to that. And then we'll also attend the Colorado State Fair Military Appreciation Luncheon. So that's a, a and anything dealing with military affairs, I, I'm all over it. You know, I'm on active duty, but one day I will be transitioning to being just a veteran myself. So I look forward to uh, meeting those folks and how they support military and veterans in the area. And then um, we will have our, on Tuesday, which is a uh, Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the 29th and 30th of August, we'll have all my higher headquarters, CMA. They're gonna be coming down. They'll bring the director, Mr. Horn, and some of the staff. And then we'll go through our quarterly um, readiness operations and closure brief with them. That gives us a chance to talk about how we're doing with closure, talk about where we might need some support and resources from them, and then recommendations for reaching up higher in the military, in the army for anything that they can't provide so that we continue to, to smooth out um, how do we do, how we conduct our closure. And then the last thing I wanna mention, and we talked about a little bit before, um, is the PCAP end of mission celebration. It's gonna be a big event. Um, I look forward to attending that and getting a chance to thank all the great folks and all the hard work that they've been doing with making this, this uh, international treaty that we signed and completing that mission and the celebration of all of that. So we look forward to that as well. So pending any questions, thank you all for having me. I'll make sure I'm on every one of these events and um, I'll be standing by for any questions. Are there any questions of Colonel McCutcheon, please? We'll let you off easy this time, but <laughs> we look forward to seeing you on the 1st of August in person. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Irene. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a report from Pueblo Plex, and I think that's uh, Russell and Laura. Thanks, Irene. Good afternoon. Uh, I wanna give you two quick updates on Pueblo Plex, and then I'll turn it over to Laura Stalford, who is our program manager, to discuss or update you on our workforce retention efforts and our facilities assessment and reuse assessment of the PCAP facility itself. So two quick updates. Since our last CAC meeting, Pueblo Plex was successful in getting our amendment added to the 24 um, NDAA, the House of Representatives version, we had just before that got our version of uh, our amendment into the Senate version of the NDAA. And I'm actually watching right now, the Senate is considering the Senate version of the NDAA presently. So we feel very good that the BRAC closure and disposal process will be uh, implemented into the 24 NDAA and carried out through the Army. And so that gives you know the aqua team certainty it gives the community certainty it gives pueblo plex and pcd certainty it's you know been a two and a half year effort and i know that i've been sharing a lot of press and a lot of um you know emails but uh, appreciate everybody's support and i am thrilled that we're going to get this done you know hopefully uh, sometime this year uh secondly we have 
submitted our economic development conveyance application to the Army uh, relating to the surplus property at Pueblo Chemical Depot. The Army is presently reviewing that document. Um, they've already given us their first round of comments. We're responding to those comments tomorrow, and we are awaiting um, a draft of the economic development conveyance memorandum of agreement which is really the real estate contract that we need in order to acquire this property from the United States Army. So all of that is in the works. Um, our schedule is calling for us to transfer the first parcel, parcel one, um, in November of this year. So that's our aspirational deadline. We, uh, we feel confident that we can make that if all goes well. Uh, so wanted to give you those two quick updates and then Laura, if you're ready or Janine, if you have Laura's slides up, we'll turn it over to Laura to complete our reports. Thank you, Russell. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Janine, we can go ahead and progress to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so just to, you know, Russell's kind of covered um, briefly some Publoplex, uh, you know, current activities. Um, but just to take it back a little bit, um, as a reminder, uh, you know, our entity uh, was created to redevelop the property, um, support job creation, and enhance the tax base, as well as promote health, safety, and welfare of the people of the state of Colorado. Uh, and that's something that we work toward every single day. Next slide, please. So as Russell mentioned, um, in addition to the efforts that Pueboplex, uh, you know, currently has ongoing, um, we also uh, are the recipient of a grant uh, entitled the Pueblo Area Defense Diversification Grant. And um, that is uh, work related to the workforce and infrastructure that Russell had mentioned. Next slide. So um, this uh, grant activity is funded through the Department of Defense Office of Local Defense Community Cooperation, OLDCC or Old CC, however you'd like to say the acronym. Um, and uh, with those grant efforts, um, we have undertaken uh, workforce adjustment activities that include a workforce retention and transition evaluation, as well as a communication strategy and plan. Um, obviously, these things are very important to our community uh, as we have this upcoming workforce transition occurring over the next few years. Um, also, as part of this grant uh, is a project for PCAP reuse assessment that includes an existing improvements evaluation and reuse assessment of the facility to help identify industries that could have potential reuse uh, opportunities um, with that facility and land. Um, next slide, please, Janine. Um, both of those studies are in their final stages um, and information is going to be shared uh, as we have those completed. As part of the workforce transition and uh, retention evaluation, uh, we conducted a survey of PCD and PCAP employees. And this survey uh, revealed something quite interesting, which was 56% of the respondents uh, indicated that they have interest in pursuing new employment opportunities in the Pueblo area. Um, this figure, uh, you know, definitely represents the need for the community to respond um, as this workforce transition occurs, and it is encouraging um, that individuals have interest in remaining um, local, regionally, or at least within the state. Um, you know, 25% in this response uh, did indicate that they plan to relocate out of state, half of those with their existing employer, which is understandable. Um, some individuals are going to, uh, you know, pursue uh, their next opportunity um, remaining with uh, one of the contracting groups, Amentum, the Bechtel, Battelle, what have you. Um, and then there's another 10% that plan to pursue employment outside the Pueblo area, but within the state. Um, again, reasonable, knowing that we have uh, a lot of workforce that uh, commutes from Colorado Springs. Next slide, please, Janine. Um, so with these grant efforts, uh, this is all in coordination with key stakeholders and collaborators, and that includes uh, PEDCO, our local economic development corporation, as well as uh, Public Chemical Depot leadership and PCAP. Um, including uh, Amentum, Bechtel, Battelle, Lidos, and GP Strategies, um, as they all have workforces uh, located at the plant. 
Um, this also includes a lot of effort and work in collaboration with our state and regional workforce development partners. And those are all from uh, various entities, including OEDIT, which is Office of Economic Development and International Trade, um, CDLE with Labor and Employment. Um, you know, they have enacted their statewide um, rapid response program um, in response to this workforce transition in the state. Um, higher education institutions are important partners in this uh, effort um, as, you know, skill gaps are identified and uh, retooling and skill upskilling opportunities are identified for uh, transitioning workforce to take advantage of. Um, of course, also includes Pueblo and Pikes Peak Workforce Centers and Mount Carmel uh, Veteran Services Centers, who has done a tremendous job establishing their presence in Pueblo. Next slide, please. Um, so a lot of uh, activities that we're going to have going on in this upcoming year include community engagement and outreach. Um, and this includes, you know, community and civic groups, um, for example, uh, meeting with the Optimist Club today in town, um, you know, and outreaching to all the various groups that um, have um, an interest uh, uh, in um, this workforce transition and as the base closure occurs. Um, of course, governmental policymaking groups, service and military support organizations, affected employers and employees. Um, the surrounding rural communities uh, are very important as well as we have, you know, workforce that live in um, communities other outside of Pueblo and El Paso counties. And so making sure that those communities um, are receiving the information and re resources are identified for employees as they uh, work for their next step. Next slide, please, Janine. Thank you. Um, and so, you know, these efforts are important in obviously addressing the workforce transition and mitigating the economic impact. Um, you know, the communities uh, regionally have become accustomed to this workforce being in place and live, work, and playing in those communities. And, um, you know, this transition will have undoubtedly some economic impact uh, in the community. Um, so it's important to connect the affected workforce with avail available programs and resources. Um, again, that kind of includes, you know, that long list of collaborations that I referenced before, um, informing the area employers and the community of the transition of the workforce and their availability, definitely on a lot of uh, prospect radar, um, you know, people are hearing about the workforce and are very interested in this particular highly skilled workforce. Um, and then also strengthening communications between the various entities involved and aligning the workforce and economic development strategies within our community uh, along with this workforce transition. Next slide, please. And yep, there we go. Perfect. Um, so Basically, that is what I wanted to cover today, just to provide a quick update on those activities that Publiplex has going on related to the workforce transition um, and uh, reuse assessment. And I'll reserve time for any questions or uh, Russell, if you have any additional comments. Are there any questions of Russell or Laura, please? I think the heat's gone to our brain for all of us <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Laura and Russell. Appreciate Thank all you. your efforts on that. Our next item on the agenda is the permitting. And Julie, I will call on you if you have anything more to add to permitting than we've already spent half of the afternoon on. <laughs> yes, um, I do not have much to add. Yeah, I will just say, um, we just had one permit mod that we approved in the last month since we last met. Um, that was a class one with approval permit mod request S029. Um, so that was pretty much the final operational um, permit mod for the SDC. So that was um, for ammo can processing in the SDC. So there were, um, I think it was four ammo cans that were left over that contained um, M6 propellant and ignition cartridges. And so this mod was just to allow um, recontainerizing those um, ammo cans under engineering controls so that the net explosive weight 
for each feed would remain under what was already proven out under the overpack trial burn, which I think was 0 0.6 pounds. So um, we approved that mod. Obviously it was only four ammo cans. So processing did not take that long. I think it was done within a day. I'm sure PCAP will have more information in their update. Um, and yeah, other than that, we, we received um, permit mod requests B071, which is the PCAP main plant closure plan resubmittal. We received that on June 22nd. And we received the SDC um, counterpart, which is permit mod S028 on June 21st. And so we've just been hard at work, you know, reviewing those where we started with um, B071. So we're finalizing our comments on that this week. We'll be sure to include you, Irene, so that you can distribute the NODs to the rest of the CAC. Um, yeah, and that's kind of, we've kind of all been living and breathing closure, it seems like for the past month. So if not longer. So um, that's all I have. I'm happy to answer questions if anyone has any. Does anyone have any questions of Julie concerning uh, any of the permit mods or the permit that she just approved or they approved earlier this month? Speak up if you do. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Thanks. Uh, Patrick or John, I'll turn it over to you for the bio utilization group. Okay, I'll now turn it over to Patrick and see how our bugs are doing. <laughs> I think Patrick may be muted. Yeah, yeah. Can we we can go ahead and go on to slide three directly? You got us now. Yeah, I hear okay, you. Okay, so here's kind of the meat of it. So we finished processing all hydrolysate related to processed in the munitions last Sunday, and so uh, we had collected all the the flushing water in tank 301, and uh, we have transferred some of that over to tank 101. So there was some residual agent in the plant as we did the flushing. So when we filled up the tank 301, that was about 10% of the hydro of the TDG level that is norm that we've been normally processing. So we still have TDG to process. It's just 10 times less in strength. So we've moved some of that over into tank 101. And there is some residue in the bottom of 101 and 201. As you recall, we modified those tanks to kind of use the bottom of the tank as a settling to capture sludge from the process. And so there's a little bit of hydrolysate on top of that. So as we transfer our flushing fluids into those tanks and then we'll then process them in, in the BTA there, there is some hydrolysate, just the concentrations are gonna be much lower, but we'll continue to process it in the same fashion that we've been processing. So go on, go ahead and go on to the next slide. And uh, we're still in the same mode. Module one and two are operating. You know, module three has long, long ago been cleaned out and we've never used module four. Uh, we are continue to operate at essentially 100% efficiency. Go ahead and go to the next slide. So yeah, so this slide and, and, and the slide beyond, we're running about three gallons per minute of the neat uh, hydrolysate into the reactors. And then there on slide seven, you can see uh, the orange line, we're still pegged at 100% removal efficiency. The blue line, you can see we're in that uh, two to 3,000 milligrams per liter of the thiodiglycol, where previously we'd been operating in the you know, maybe 4,000 to 6,000 milligram per liter range. So we're, we're down, you know, much lower in concentration. And then we're also adding less dilution water as we process. But we're still uh, able to, you know, track the TDG and how the bugs are doing in the removal. Next slide is kind of the same just for module two. It's, you know, a little bit lower concentration feeding in, but again, it's just, you know, plugging along at 100% removal efficiency. And then uh, as far as the brine reduction system, 
you know, we shut down recently because, you know, we were, because we only operate that periodically as we accumulate enough brine to be able to run it. And we shut down on the 15th, but we're going to start up again in a couple days earlier than we normally would. We don't have that much brine accumulated, but we're going to be going through a boiler outage. And so we're going to burn down all the brine to zero, get the tanks empty so that we have more time uh, to complete the boiler outage and switch over at our leisure. And that's that's pretty much it. Um, I had a, just to, to clarify modules one and two, um, what is their future? Are they gonna be uh, torn down or? Yes. Yes, so that module one and two would go and then uh, right now we're slated to uh, that Puebloplex. We would they would retain modules three and four. There, there. That way, if they had some industry that relocated here and you need some kind of wastewater treatment, they'd have a way to accomplish that. So module four has never been used. So we'd be doing an administrative closure on module four, and, and so we can basically we can give that to them without having to do all that much because it's not contaminated. And we will have to clean out the module three to whatever, to the levels that we ultimately agree upon with CDPHE. Um, and so that will be a bit more difficult. And quite frankly, you know, we probably will have to remove all the media out of that uh, to, to get it to that point. So if, if that were to be reutilized, then someone would have to go back and add fresh fresh media into the unit to, to bring it back into an operational state. Uh, Russell, how is your, your uh, study going on the uh, BTA? So it's progressing really well, John. We actually had a meeting with Patrick yesterday in our consulting group. And so we've got you know a pretty definitive list of those items and those systems that we want to keep. Um, we have five or six systems that are maybes. And then we're, we're you know, 100% in alignment on all of those that are not to be kept and to be demoed. So I think we're at about a 75% completion on this, but we wanted to get data to the Aqua team so that they can socialize that with CDPHE as to what our, you know, our true desires are as far as reuse of the systems at the PCAP facility. Any other questions? I don't see any hands. Okay, Irene, it's all yours. Okay, and we'll turn it over to the PCAC team to Todd and Kim for their presentation. Okay, so again, we'll uh, do it like we used to usually do with Todd and Kim and myself. A uh, little different briefing this time since there's no uh, munition destruction to talk about. Uh, so, uh, we'll talk a little bit about, probably more about uh, workforce transition, a uh, little where the plant is, uh, transition between ops and uh, getting started on closure. And then we'll end with discussion on the celebration uh, coming up in the end of August. So I'll turn it over to Todd to talk about safety. Yeah, I also want to uh, thank Julie and the team again, uh, working with PCB, <laughs> us, and uh, uh, CDPHE on, on those ammo cans uh, to safely get those destroyed with those additional en engineering controls. As stated, it, it was done in just a, a, a couple of days after being approved, uh, but it was safely uh, destroyed, and, and it was benefit for, for all, all three to get that uh, safely destroyed through the STCs. So safety. Um, uh, I do have some bad news, actually, and, and uh, disappointing news that uh, one of our recordables that we occurred in the March timeframe uh, will be upgraded, uh, was upgraded to a lost time case rate here this month. Uh, so completely preventable. Uh, these were the storms that came in. We had two events where the storms came in, uh, one right around uh, 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 when we were uh, changing and uh, rotating shifts. Another one just early in the morning also, uh, we had put out uh, restrictions for folks not to move about the plant site unless it was essential work. Uh, the employee thought that the work they were doing was essential and actually slip and fell uh, exiting out of our uh, security station to enter into our CLA. Uh, that employee then has uh, required some uh, uh, 
additional treatment that's going to uh, move that to a lost time case rate. So uh, we are resetting the clock. That will be from uh, mid-March uh, since our last lost time case rate. Uh, and uh, as we discussed with our teams, uh, these are preventable events, uh, even the recordables. So we're stressing safety as we're getting ready to move into closure. Um, you know, we've discussed uh, in the previous meeting about lockout tagout, identifying hazards, making sure that we understand those hazards uh, prior to performing any of these closure activities. That also comes about moving about the plant site. Uh, so uh, the team has a lot of uh, training that, that we're doing with the teams, uh, making sure we're prepared, discussing uh, the work packages to identify those hazards and moving into that next phase and want to make sure that uh, everyone's on the same page prior to do the evolution. When we do closure, we've been doing operations for the past six years. Sometimes in closure, when we come in, your configuration, what you're thinking you're going to be seeing is going to be completely different than what you had the day before. So that's why we're stressing to the teams that, nope, you have to stop, reassess, make sure you identified all the hazards before performing your, your action. In addition, uh, we discussed before about our BPP certification and how important that is for us uh, to maintain because we still have these closure activities and in the f future uh, potential uh, demolition activities uh, here for uh, some of the facilities. So we are in our second day of our B BPP recertification. So the team uh, has been out here uh, assessing us. Uh, evaluating the sites. Uh, today, I believe they did over 80 interviews with employees um, and discussions. They'll do additional interviews and additional assessments tomorrow, uh, but we hope to maintain our BPP certification, and which is important to, uh, to what we talk about, about identifying those hazards, making sure we're working to make sure these operations are safe for the employees and the community. All right, moving on, next slide. So this is why we're a little late, uh, but we were talking about our permit modifications. Of course, the public meetings were, were uh, right uh, prior to this uh, CAC meeting. So uh, a lot of this, if you were on, you, you've heard the same thing, but the highlights are, as uh, Julie stated, the permit modification B071 was submitted on the 22nd of June. Uh, it has our PCAP uh, closure plan to close out 51 hazardous waste management units. Um, the waste that's generated as part of our ops will continue to be processed out for our waste analysis plan, but it also has a closure waste analysis plan for any waste that is generated as part of our closure. Uh, in addition, we have some uh, for all the analysis for closure will be performed uh, by a third party analytical lab, uh, but we have our closure sampling and analysis plan. Uh, we've updated some permit documents support some additional closure plan implementation. The main concepts there is our munition uh, service magazines, using those more as a 90-day waste storage. Uh, this will actually uh, help us be safer not moving some waste at night uh, out to the other magazines uh, and allow us to uh, safely uh, move that uh, waste. In addition, we'll transfer some of our uh, monitoring equipment that's no longer needed for operations. We'll use that monitoring equipment to move it to where we'll be doing these waste generations and processing um, to make sure that uh, we're doing uh, uh, sampling and analysis of those areas. And then uh, you know, well, I got another slide on this, but for both the SDCs and the main plant, uh, the closure uh, certification will be by an independent Colorado registered professional engineer. And we'll discuss that here in just a few minutes. On the STC one is uh, the S028. So that was submitted one day prior to the B71 one, uh, it closed, the closure plan for that closes out 11 uh, hazardous waste management units. Uh, all the equipment is to be removed. Uh, the end states are either demolition and removal and disposal in a, as a hazardous waste uh, or reuse. And uh, for, re for reuse, it'll be below worker uh, population limits for federal reuse. Uh, as you've heard Mr. Abay in uh, uh, state before, uh, they do have plans for these three SDCs for federal reuse. Anything that is not uh, part of that federal reuse will be uh, uh, processed below the general population limit uh, for any reuse uh, uh, opportunities there. 
Again, uh, update to the closure sampling and analysis plan. Some updates uh, to a couple procedures and lab methods. There's two procedure updates. Um, they're going to perform some additional laboratory methods uh, off the SDCs as we're doing the closure activities. But then also using that uh, certified independent Colorado registered professional engineer. So if you go to the next slide a little more on that, so that uh, independent uh, professional engineer will perform a combination of inspections, interviews. They'll be out there on the work sites looking at the, the modifications, uh, what we're doing, uh, decontamination, decommissioning, any other closure activities, and make sure that work is being completed in accordance with the permit whenever that permit uh, is approved and what, what those requirements are. Um, they'll uh, also do observe uh, closure activities and act as that on-site rep. They'll prepare an independent certification uh, as necessary in accordance with the permit, and they will prepare a closure certification document uh, for submittal to CDPHE for review and acceptance as that independent uh, professional engineer and look at the closure activities to ensure it aligns with the permit requirements. Again, uh, the public comment period is open, uh, ends at uh, August 22nd. Uh, the comments, of course, uh, can go, uh, will be submitted to Julie, CDPHE. In addition, because uh, this is the uh, SDC is a part of the PCD commit, if you go uh, P PCD permit, if you go to the next slide, uh, any questions on the project or the permit modification request, it can be directed to Sandy Romero. Uh, who works for us at Bechtel, uh, Michael Brock, uh, part of uh, PCD, Ron is part of the outreach office, or Janine, uh, also if they have questions about the project or the permit modification requests. Uh, I know, uh, as stated, uh, Julie stated, we'll get some NODs. Uh, we'll work through those. I know one of those are uh, constituents of uh, potential concerns of uh, making sure we have those identified uh, moving forward. But our teams are committed to answer those, NO, uh, answer those NODs, uh, coordinate with CDPHE, uh, get together and make sure we're aligned as we move forward in these closure activities. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kim, who will discuss a little on our hydraulic state processing and shipping. All right, so here uh, is one of our scorecards that we routinely look at. So you do see an uptick of volume being processed through uh, the back end of the plant. Um, and that's all due to the flushing that we've been doing through the agent piping system through the tank so that we can um, remove that hazard to support um, our declaration to terminate surety. Um, we did complete the um, sampling evolution over the weekend. We have confirmed that we have met the requirements. So we're now working with the government uh, to process out that documentation. So what does that mean for us? It means that we can um, downgrade those exclusion areas into limited areas. It makes it more streamlined for personnel to enter the areas to do work to support closure. Um, but all of the safety requirements still are in place so that we protect the workforce as we go through the closure activities. So you can see now over 11 million gallons processed through BO4. As, as Dr. Sullivan mentioned, we have completed processing out the munition related hydrolysate um, through the final tank, tank 201. So now it's just the flush liquids. Um, and, um, and then you see us progressing through uh, module one, module two, and then through the back end, with 187 million total gallons process. Um, so the other major milestone that we've been working on for pre-closure is to complete the activities to terminate treaty. Um, through OPCW. So we now have completed the plant actions through the BTA. The last piece that we are completing is the processing out of the energetics in Anniston, Alabama. That is slated to complete August the 1st. Um, and then the OPCW inspectors will travel to Alabama. Um, they will do that confirmation and we can stand down and terminate um, treaty for PCAP. So where does that leave us? The next activity in our closure schedule would be to commence equipment disassembly once we get approvals from CDPHE. Our first targeted area are the ICAMs. Um, the ICAMs, again, process the mortars. Um, we know that those were heavily contaminated and we would size reduce those and uh, 
properly dispose of that hazardous waste, just like we did with the 155 and the 105 ICAM, or CAMs through closure. Um, so we're eagerly awaiting that. Um, we're walking our maintenance teams and our ops teams through preparation to get ready for that. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, as Todd mentioned, the plant personnel are focused on training activities. Next slide. What's well, always about the people. We talk about how important our people are and how we uh, need to retain them as we support the closure activities. Um, but our D staff plan does have folks leaving this year. Um, they're also scheduled to depart through 24 and 25. Um, Pueblo Plex, uh, Laura had mentioned that, you know, we have a, about 50% of the people that do want to remain local. Um, one of the uh, big targeted areas that, that, that we've been doing all the way back since uh, the springtime is supporting job fairs. Uh, so we've had two recent job fairs focused uh, local hiring. Uh, one was in early June that we mentioned in the last CAC and all the uh, manufacturers forum um, did support a, a job fair at Jetway 4 at our training facility. We also uh, had a, a big job fair for our Momentum Critical Missions uh, locations at Fort Carson and the Air Force Academy. So that's great for folks that live in Colorado Springs or may want to commute from Pueblo. So that, that's great because that allows folks to you know, not have to worry about selling their house, not having to reloc relocate their kids to different school systems. And those were both very well attended um, from the workers and they were very appreciative of how we're really working hard to find them downstream positions um, here in Pueblo and Colorado Springs. Um, we have a lot of engagement with Pueblo um, Pedco um, with Jeff Shaw and his group. Um, they actually used our labor resources um, that intend to stay to support um, a selection of a future manufacturer here um, for our community. So that's wonderful that we were able to do that. And uh, that will find homes for around 100 people um, to stay for a future opportunity that will be coming here um, locally. And then we continue uh, job fairs with our respective companies. Uh, Los Alamos is just down the road. Um, that was completed on July 12th and the 13th. Um, we do continue having um, the uh, Workforce Center come in to the project. Um, every week they're supporting uh, the workforce with resumes, uh, looking forward for uh, skills training uh, to close any gaps for jobs they might be interested in. And we really support Nancy Zimmer and all her support uh, to the team to get us ready for future relocation. So with that, I'll turn it over to Walt. <clears throat> so, starting late May, certainly through June, and continuing through July, uh, because of the end of ops, uh, we've had garnered lots of media attention. Uh, we were fortunate uh, to have a substantial part of the local media and even national media uh, visit the site. Uh, give firsthand information on uh, what it took to uh, destroy our portion of the United States stockpile, uh, do uh, stories on future use uh, of the facility and uh, transition of the workforce. Uh, so you can see on the right side there uh, a who's who of some of the media coverage uh, they either did stories or uh, sent out uh, stories. Uh, so we have, again, quite a bit of media coverage. We probably had as much in the last three months as we had in the previous uh, 15 years that we've been here, So, uh, which is all right. Uh, that was the most important part of us being here. Uh, was getting rid of the stockpile. So next slide, please. So also uh, a real, oh, and I'll progress here a little bit, a real cool thing that happened uh, along the way uh, was having Mr. Abay 
and uh, Mr. Costas from uh, BNI Bechtel, uh, Mr. Evans from Momentum come out and jointly recognize uh, the whole workforce and uh, specific individuals uh, who performed uh, tasks or critical functions over the years. Uh, again, you know, doing this, we don't take the opportunity to recognize the workforce and the employees as much as we should. And I say this was a tremendous day uh, for everyone involved. Uh, I think everybody was walking a couple feet off the ground mm -hmm. there, just uh, the euphoria from uh, recently completing our email mission. So thanks out to uh, the workforce there for getting us uh, where we needed to be safely and significantly uh, ahead of the treaty schedule. And certainly uh, thanks to Mr. Abay, Mr. Costas, and Mr. Evans for coming out and recognizing that workforce. Next slide, please. So I'll turn this over to Cora and she'll walk us through uh, our end of Opsy now. Thank you, Walton. Um, as you can see, in terms of date, time, and place, we're going to be at the Pueblo Convention Center at 2 o'clock on Wednesday the 30th. Invitations did go out last week, but a reminder that the event is open to the public, so I have significant capacity at the Convention Center, and we hope to fill those ballrooms up. Um, I won't go into too much detail on um, the sequence, but the ceremony will definitely include recognition of the workforce and our project partners, uh, musical performances, as well as some videos and slideshows um, about the history of both PCD and the PCAP project. Um, a reception will follow all of that, and I encourage you to tell everyone you know to, to be there, and I look forward to seeing you all. Okay, thank you, Cora. Yes, uh, that's going to be uh, a fun time had by all uh, as we uh, once again uh, get to recognize all the key players that went into uh, destruction of the stockpile. Uh, a lot of local entities, uh, too many to, to name, uh, contributed. Certainly, uh, the Bechtel Pueblo team here, PCD, uh, CDPHE, and a host of other uh, entities out there uh, stretching across this country. So, uh, if you got an invitation, please come. Uh, if you know of somebody uh, who wants to come that didn't get an invitation, please invite them. Because uh, again, it is open to the public and uh, we want to recognize everybody and have everybody participate. Okay, next slide, please. So, Irene, that kind of wraps up our uh, presentation for the month. Again, we'll leave here with a picture of uh, the VPP process and auditors that's going on. Uh, Todd mentioned that that's a key part of our, our safety and con ops program that we want to maintain going forward. And uh, I uh, realize, uh, I mean, that, you know, typically in August, we do not have an official meeting unless needed. Uh, but again, we stand ready uh, to support the CAC if there's any information needs or any of those type things that we can certainly facilitate or, or keep in the loop uh, next month. Uh, so there's not a, a huge gap there uh, going into September. So with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Walton. Are there any questions of Walton or Kim or Todd uh, on their presentations? As I said, I don't think so. I don't see any. I, apparently, we are all tired and we are all hot. So thank you very much. Our next meeting is scheduled for September 
27th. It will be held virtually and it will be at three o'clock, not at four. Uh, at least at this point, we don't think it'll be at four, but that's all right. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Have a safe rest of the summer. And Walton, I'll be in touch with you about having a, maybe a CAC meeting at some point with you. Very good. Look forward to that. Okay.